Hi, this is Brad Constantine, and you've reached the Book of Mormon Lecture Series. I've been teaching seminary and institute for the last 11 years, and uh, this is an attempt to do a deep dive into the Book of Mormon itself. I'm hoping that you'll find this uplifting and edifying. This is not an official recording of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, but every attempt has been made to be as doctrinally accurate as possible. So if you're ready for a deep dive into the Book of Mormon, here we go. Hi, and welcome back to the Book of Mormon podcast. This is going to be a discussion of Ether chapter 13. So Mormon has, Moroni has just been talking about faith and uh, the principle of faith and that we all have weaknesses, and so now he's going to continue his writing. And now I, Moroni, proceed to finish my record concerning the destruction of the people of whom I have been writing. For behold, they rejected all the words of Ether, for he truly told them of all things from the beginning of man, and that after the waters had receded from off the face of this land, it became a choice land above all other lands, a chosen land of the Lord. Wherefore, the Lord would have that all men should serve him who dwell upon the face thereof and that it was the place of the New Jerusalem. Now, this is a new revelation here about uh, where New Jerusalem is going to be, which should come down out of heaven and the holy sanctuary of the Lord. Remember that when Enoch got translated, that his people went up into, into heaven as translated beings. And um, at the second coming or during the millennium or shortly around that time frame, the city of Enoch will return uh, and join with the New Jerusalem that will be then upon the earth. Uh, and then they will be a part of that. Verse 4, Behold, Ether saw the days of Christ, and he spake concerning a new Jerusalem upon this land. And so this is going to be where Jackson County, Missouri, uh, where New Jerusalem will be located. And he spake also concerning the house of Israel, and the Jerusalem from whence Lehi came, or from whence Lehi should come. After it should be destroyed, it should be built up again, a holy city unto the Lord. Wherefore, it could not be a new Jerusalem, for it had been in a time of old, but it should be built up again and become a holy city of the Lord, and it should be built upon, it shall be built unto the house of Israel. And that a new Jerusalem should be built upon this land unto the remnant of the seed of Joseph, for which things there has been a type. For as Joseph brought his father down into the land of Egypt, even so he died there. Wherefore, the Lord brought a remnant of the seed of Joseph out of the land of Jerusalem, that he might be merciful unto the seed of Joseph, that they should perish not, even as he was merciful unto the father of Joseph, that he should perish not. Wherefore, the remnant of the house of Joseph shall be built upon this land, and it shall be a land of their inheritance, and they shall build up a holy city unto the Lord, like unto the Jerusalem of old, and they shall no more be confounded until the end come, when the earth shall pass away. And there shall be a new heaven and a new earth, and they shall be like unto the old, save the old have passed away, and, the, and all things have become new. Ellen McConkie said, This earth was created in a new or paradisiacal state, then incident to Adam's transgression. It fell to its present celestial state. At the second coming of our Lord, it will be renewed, regenerated, refreshed, transfigured, become again a new earth, a paradisiacal earth. It will be a terrestrial planet. Its millennial, I added that part. Its millennial status will be a return to its pristine state of beauty and glory, the state that existed before the fall. This same designation applies also to the celestial heaven and earth that will prevail in the day when the Father and the Son make this planet their habitation. Verse 10, And then cometh the New Jerusalem. Elder McConkie said, New Jerusalem, to envision what is meant by this title, we must know five facts. First, ancient Jerusalem, the city of much of our Lord's personal ministry among men, shall be rebuilt in the last days and become one of the two great world capitals, a millennial city from which the word of the Lord shall go forth. Two, a new Jerusalem, a new Zion, a city of God, shall be built on the American continent. Three, Enoch's city, the original Zion, the city of holiness, was taken up into heaven. Four, Enoch's city, with its translated inhabitants, now in their resurrected state, shall return as a new Jerusalem to join with the city of the same name, which has been built upon the American continent. And five, when this earth becomes a celestial sphere, that great city, the holy Jerusalem, shall again descend out of heaven from God, as this earth becomes the abode of celestial beings forever. Ministering among the Nephites, the resurrected Lord told them that the American continent was to be the site of a city to be built by Latter-day Israel, called the New Jerusalem. Ether told the Jaredites that this continent was the place of the New Jerusalem, which should come down out of heaven. Continuing verse 10, And blessed are they who dwell therein, for it is they whose garments are white through the blood of the Lamb, and they are they who are numbered among the remnant of the seed of Joseph, who were the house of Israel. And then also cometh the Jerusalem of old, and the inhabitants thereof, blessed are they, for they have been washed in the blood of the Lamb, and they are they who are scattered and gathered in from the four quarters of the earth and from the north countries, and are partakers of the fulfilling of the covenant which God made with their father Abraham. 
Ether prophesied of the millennial day when old Jerusalem also will become again a holy city, inhabited by Jews who have not only been gathered to their promised land from the four quarters of the earth, but also have accepted Jesus and his only true and living church and have been cleansed by faith in the atonement and faithfulness to gospel ordinances and commandments. The temple will play a significant role in creating a sanctified and holy people and thereby making Jerusalem a holy city. Jerusalem shall rise again. Elder McConkie uh, had said, As she fell from grace because he, she forsook the living God, so shall she rise again when she once more worships her eternal king in the beauty of holiness. As she fell because of iniquity, so shall she be restored through righteousness. When the Jews receive the fullness of the everlasting gospel, as it has been restored through the prophet Joseph Smith, they will return to Jerusalem as the Lord's true legal administrators to build up Jerusalem as a Zion, and to place again on the ancient site the temple of the new kingdom. And then, when the Lord comes, the ancient city will shine forth with a glory and a splendor never before known among mortals. And that was again by Elder McConkie. Notice that he mentions here about the temple being built in Jerusalem. Um, and he says that um, it will be built on the ancient site the temple uh, was built originally. Now, we don't know for sure where that was. We think that the Temple Mount itself was not where the temple may have been, but that that might have been the Antonia Fortress, but that the temple might have been to the south of that in what's called the City of David, uh, which now there's not a there's not the mosque of uh, the Muslims on, on the area where the, the archaeologist thinks that the temple may have actually been, been placed. So we'll see what happens when the church... Uh, begins to build the temple in Jerusalem, that'll be a, a great day. That's what I'm looking forward to. Verse 12, And when these things come, bringeth to pass the scripture which saith that they, there are they who were first, meaning the Jews, who shall be last, and there are they who were last, meaning the Gentiles, who shall be first. The gospel in the last days will go first to the Gentiles and then to the Jews. The prevailing notion in the world is that this is the city of Jerusalem, the ancient city of the Jews, which in the day of regeneration will be renewed, but this is not the case. We read in the book of Ether that the Lord revealed to him many of the same things which were seen by John. Ether, as members of the church will know, was the last of the prophets among the Jaredites, and the Lord had revealed to him much concerning the history of the Jews in their city of Jerusalem, which stood in the days of the, of the ministry of our Savior. In his vision, in many respects, similar to that uh, given to John, Enoch saw the old city <clears throat> of Jerusalem and also the new city, which was, has not yet been built, and he wrote of them as follows, as reported in the writings of Moroni. Uh, and so uh, I just read uh, verses 2 through 11. In the day of regeneration, when all things are made new, there will be three great cities that will be holy. One will be the Jerusalem of old, which shall be rebuilt according to the prophecy of Ezekiel. One will be the city of Zion, or of Enoch, which was taken from the earth when Enoch was translated, and which will be restored, and the city of Zion, or New Jerusalem, which is to be built by the seed of Joseph, on this, the American continent. After the close of the millennial reign, we are informed that Satan, who was bound during the millennium, shall be loosed and go forth to deceive the nations. Then will come the end, the, end, the earth will die and be purified and receive its resurrection. During this cleansing period, the city Zion, or New Jerusalem, will be taken from the earth, and when the earth is prepared for the celestial glory, the city will come down according to the prediction in the book of Revelation. That was by Joseph Fielding Smith. Verse 13, And I was about to write more, but I am forbidden. It seems like they, just when they get to, to the good parts, they're not allowed to continue to write. But great and marvelous were the prophecies of Ether, but they esteemed him as not, and cast him out, and he hid himself in the cavity of a rock by day, and by night he went forth, viewing the things which should come upon the people. And as he dwelt in the cavity of the rock, he made the remainder of this record, re viewing the destructions which came upon the people by night. And it came to pass that in that same year in which he was cast out from among the people, there began to be a great war among the people, for there were many who rose up, who were mighty men, and sought to destroy Coriantumr by their secret plans of wickedness, of which hath been spoken. And now Coriantumr, having studied himself in all the arts of war, and all the cunning of the world, wherefore he gave battle unto them who sought to destroy him. But he repented not, neither his fair sons nor daughters, neither the fair sons and daughters of Cohor, neither the fair sons and daughters of Corihor, and in fine, there were none of the fair sons and daughters upon the face of the whole earth who repented of their sins. Verse 18, Wherefore it came to pass that in the first year that Ether dwelt in the cavity of a rock, there were many people who were slain by the sword of, the, of those secret combinations, fighting against Coriantumr, that they might obtain the kingdom. 
And it came to pass that the sons of Coriantum were fought much and bled much. And in the second year of the word, in the second year, the word of the Lord came to Ether that he should go and prophesy unto Coriantum, that if he would repent, and all his household, the Lord would give unto him his kingdom and spare the people. Otherwise, they should be destroyed, and all his household, save it were himself. And he should only live to see the fulfilling of the prophecies which had been spoken concerning another people receiving the land for their inheritance. And Coriantumr should receive a burial by them, and every soul should be destroyed, save it were Coriantumr. So here Ether is predicting that if Coriantumr and his people don't repent, that he's going to live to see the destruction of his entire people, that he's going to be the only one to live, and that he'll be found by the Nephites uh, and live among them for a time. Verse 22, And it came to pass that Coriantumr repented not, neither his household, neither the people, and the wars ceased not, and they sought to kill Ether. But he fled from before them and hid again in the cavity of the rock. And it came to pass that there arose up Sherod, and he also gave battle unto Coriantumr, and he did beat him, insomuch that in the third year he did bring him into captivity. And the sons of Coriantumr in the fourth year did beat Sherod, and did obtain the kingdom again unto their father. Now there began to be a war upon all the face of the land, every man with his band, fighting for that which he desired. And there were robbers, and in fine all manner of wickedness upon all the face of the land. And it came to pass that Coriantumr was exceedingly angry with Sherod, and he went again, he went against him with his armies to battle. And they did meet in great anger, and they did meet in the valley of Gilgal, and the battle became exceedingly sore. And it came to pass that Sherod fought against him for the space of three days. And it came to pass that Coriantumr beat him, and did pursue him until he came to the plains of Heshlon. And it came to pass that Sherod gave him battle again upon the plains, and behold, he did beat Coriantumr, and drove him back again to the valley of Gilgal. And Coriantumr gave Sherod battle again in the valley of Gilgal, in which he beat Sherod and slew him. And Sherod wounded Coriantumr in his thigh, that he did not go to battle again for the space of two years, in which time all the people upon the face of the land were shedding blood, and there was none to restrain them. And that's the end of chapter 13. You can see what happens now when a people uh, don't have any hope in Christ. Uh, they just fight to kill each other. I bear testimony that these things are true, that this is translated material that we're reading. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen.